Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and I welcome you to our 25th lecture of creating a complete inventory management system. Uh, to, to, you know we started making a mobile application and today we have finished uh, registration and uh, logging in logic. So today we are going to proceed from there whereby we are going to see now yeah, last time we were able to put the user in the lock database. Now, how can we fetch this user from the local database and be able to do what? And be able to display the user or to access the user's information. So that's what we're going to do right now. So without wasting any minute, let's go ahead and start doing that. So I'm going to, you can see this is our home screen or our home menu. Uh, here we did the login logic. Here we did the registration logic. So I'm going to go ahead and put um, the what? And put the logic of uh, of getting the person who is logged in now. So I want to be able to get the person who is logged in. Okay, so that's what we're going to do right now. So I'll come to our home menu, and uh, this is a home menu. So uh -huh. So let's go to our main menu. Menu there it is. So I'm going to just duplicate this. Let me put a maybe a divider. Alright, so after I'm going to just duplicate this. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to change this one. Get logged in user. So I'm going to do the logic of getting the logged in user. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a logged in user object and I put it here. So it's going to be uh logged in user object i'm going to just put here on top so i'll be getting the logged in user and then i put in that object so it has simply put it here say logged in user and then you can say maybe uh user equals to new user new logged in user like that let me remove this constant okay so after doing that so i'm going to check so by default you know the username is empty the name is empty everything is empty so I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, create a subtitle okay, in this logged in user screen, subtitle, and I put some text and I say uh, user, okay, so maybe I can say, say name here, and then uh, user, user's name, okay, and then we go ahead and substitute uh, user.name because we have that variable. So user's name, you can see it is empty. You can go ahead and check and say if it is empty if it's empty and then put a question mark you say no name no 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 user and then if it is not empty you put the name of the user there okay so in this uh get i mean this on tap method we're going to write the logic of getting the logged in user and after getting the logged in user and then we update uh, so this name can be able to what to come here so i'm going to create here a what um i'm going to create here uh say uh a method that's going to i mean a logic that's going to get the logged in user so user equals to so i'm going to put here log i mean await okay await and say la logged in user logged in user dot get user okay so this method is going to be the one that would be responsible for getting for us the person who is logged in okay so I can say maybe good get item or oh, get 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 user. So this one that will be responsible for that. So I'm going to put here asynchronous because it's going to uh, it's going to await. All right. So after doing that, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to put now this method in this what in this logged in user. So I'll press control and press on and click on it so it can take me to this logged in user what logged in user class. So after doing that, I'm going to put here a uh, static future. Okay, let me show you. It is static future and then say get uh, logged in user. Let me say get user and then I say I make it asynchronous. Then after making it asynchronous, I go ahead and say db dot db equals to await and then say util dot init get db. So this one I'm initializing the database. After initializing the database, I go and check if the database is empty. I return an, an, a free, an, a, an empty object of, 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 of users. So if the database is not empty, 
I go ahead and get the what the logged in users like this. So this is db.query and then I say query. So when you do like this, it will get all the users who are there. Otherwise, if one pass the condition, you can do like this and then you pass condition. But since we know that you only have one user every time, remember we are deleting all the users before we said. So this one will make sure that you only have, well, I mean this one knows that you have only one user here. So it's going to be list of maps equals to maps. So if if it is uh, successful, I mean if these maps are empty, I return what? I return an, again an empty logged in user object here. So if it is not successful, I go ahead and say from JSON. So this from JSON will convert the JSON that will have come from this. And then I select the first map and then I return whatever has come from there. So by doing like this, it will be able to convert the first object in this array that has come from database and then give it here. So by doing like this, to be able to do what? To get for us the logged in user. Okay, so you can pause the video and understand this uh, method. Okay, so by doing like that, if I come back here, you will see it will get for us the good user. So the next thing you have to do what I just simply set state. So it can be able to do what to update the status, the state. So it is crying because I think this is what it is a stateless widget. So I'm going to change it to a stateful widget by just simply clicking here and then say convert to right click here and then say convert to stateful widget. Then it will make what a stateful widget. Uh, so you see. Now here we have get logged in user equals user and then await logged in user dot what dot get and then after we say set state and then we say it like that. So it said like that it means that now when someone will click here, when someone will click here, uh it will go ahead and get for us the what the person who is logged in and then update the status, the status, and then here we should expect say what the name of the person. So let us try that when I click on get logged in user. Uh, sorry. When I click on, uh, I clicked on the wrong button. Let me click here. Ah, you see, everything is not right. <laughs> it did not get for us the word the user. So let's see what is happening. Okay, so you can see. Let's see. There's something. See, select all from blog user. What are they saying? Um, not table. Okay, so let's go back and check this. Get log in user. So here we pass the table name logged in user okay so we have to first make sure the table is initialized so let's go ahead and say uh, init table and then we give it db okay so it is going to initialize the table like this and put a weight so we put there on top of that okay so let's go ahead and try so when i click on here there is no user there there's no either so it means that it was not saving the what uh, the users it was not saving the users. Oh, it did not. We did not successfully create that account. Let's try to create an account right now. So by coming here to get logged in user, and then come here and give. Sorry, and come here. Okay, I think. Let me log in. So come here. Okay, we try to log in. So successfully logged in. You see, get logged in user. You see, the user is there. The name has come. So it has successfully logged in our what? Our user. So I can just simply do here. I can come back and then I put the init method that is going to be getting this user from the database. So I can just simply come here and put init state. Init state and then I get the logged in user like this. So it will automatically call this one and change it what to a logged in user, something like that. Okay, so I can just simply put here for example in my my init to say my 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 init so here i come and create my init i just get the logged in user and then i set state okay so let's go ahead and try to stop the application and then we run it afresh so we should expect our name to show up immediately there on top
okay so let's click on get logged in user okay sorry sorry the whole point is you see the name is automatically coming even before you do it before you click on it so that shows that uh, i've successfully uh, implemented the get logged in user logic even like logging in with the user logic i've finished that so that is a very good progress uh, done so we're going to proceed uh to another thing or to the next level so there you go okay so there you go all right so the next thing that we're going to do now we're going to proceed to the next level whereby we're going to do what we're going to now get the stock items etc and be able to do it and be able to get them accordingly so let's be guided by our system or can we can even be guided by our api but let's uh, let's log into our system and then be guided by the system There it is. Let me try to to log in using the account that I created using the what? It was John at gmail.com. That's the account that I used to create using the mobile app. Try to log in. Boom. Perfectly. So you see? Perfectly working. So now we begin <coughs> from top. Uh, this person should be able to create their financial period they should be able to edit and then they should be able to do what to update them so that's what we're going to do right now okay uh, creating the financial period uh, edit and update likewise to employees likewise to store categories likewise so we're going to follow up to the time we reach here so by the time we reach there i hope we shall have got very good experience in how to create mobile applications and linking them to the dashboard so let us begin with this one bismillah so there we go so this is it so uh, we're going to do what we're going to create its model that is going to connect with this one so we should be able to do what to create our financial uh, financial periods using the what using the mobile app okay so that's what we're going to do okay so the first thing is first so first thing first so you see this account that uh, i'm using in the mobile app is the same account that i've used to log in here so first things first so uh the form is done that starts first then after the form then the list after the list then the then the what then the object itself all right so to begin i'm going to show you a technique so first of all we're going to need a model of this particular object okay we're going to need a model of this particular uh, object okay so uh, let's let me let me begin by explaining this so I'm going to begin by so you know this model is going to look just like um, it's going to be almost like constant okay for everything here so I'm going to teach you a technique whereby we can create our own logic that can generate a what uh the dat code and for us to just concentrate on what on the project implementation okay so that's what we're going to do what that's what we're going to do okay uh so you know the model that we're going to be using it's the um, i mean the the the, 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 the the fields that we're going to be using they are going to be like almost those one on the what in uh in the file in the database okay for example see here this is a financial period so these namings are the same naming that we're going to do what to be using uh in this system i mean in the in the in the in this local database okay or in the mobile app everywhere so it is going to be like the same thing almost everywhere so i come up with a technique that uh, it can help us to generate uh these models so we don't repeat ourselves okay like every time you keep on repeating yourself what if you can create a single logic that can create for you uh the whole uh programming i mean the whole like the whole project okay 
like the whole project it creates it for you so that's what you're going to do what the whole model uh you just click generate then it generates it for you so that's what i'm going to show you right now so i'm going to create first by i'm going to show you first but we're going to create one more extra um class you're going to call it maybe generator and then that class is going to swear we're going to put the logic of what of generating different things all right so we're going to go back a little bit on um our what our that code i mean our flat our we're going to go a little bit on back to what to our laravel project and then i show you how we can be able to do what to generate different classes by just coding them by ourselves or i mean without coding them by ourselves okay so let's begin so i'll come back so this is a very serious point you should you should be very serious about it because it's going to be uh, the backbone of the whole system and that's good that's going to it's a very powerful technique in a way that i don't want you to miss anything in it so what i'm going to do i'm going to go back to our inventor track in the laravel project That is the system, so I can begin by serving it. So it has been served here. Did I forget things? Okay, so so go ahead and put there. All right, so there you go. So I'm going to create a generator that we shall be using to generate the other code, okay, other codes. So we begin. Okay, so that's our our project. Okay, so I'm going to go to our important commands. Uh, I'm going to create a what? I'm going to create a. Um, a generator so I can call it maybe code generator or anything okay so I can say called gen code code generator okay so I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this so I'm creating a model called code gen and then I run this one. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. Okay. Uh, sorry. I'm going to go to migration and add there some field that I'll need. So we have three things that we shall need. For example, the table name. Uh, sorry. It's going to be a string. Uh, for example, table. 
table name that's going to be the table the name of the table where we should do what where we'll fetch the variables uh-huh so we're going to open another thing i'm going to put maybe endpoint the endpoint where we, should, we shall be fetching what where this table will be fetching data so we can put maybe some other fields let me make them text to be on safe side text and uh, text maybe i can say other field one so in case we want this for future use we can put the another filter all right so let me make them nullable and then we go ahead and generate and create this model so you should open your eyes very carefully so let me go ahead and migrate so it will be php artisan migrate there we go so our table has been migrated okay so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do a controller. Uh -huh. So I'll come back to important commands. Come here, code gen. Okay, so I'll come here and make it controller by selecting this. Control F, Alt and Enter. And then I paste there. So there we go. So I'll copy that code generator. Generator. Um, generator what? Generator controller. Like this. Uh -huh. So I'll copy it. And then paste it here and then run it so my controller will be created and you can see it here so I'll just simply copy it and then click on routes okay so after clicking on routes so you're going to add here one more thing called code gens okay for me I even I usually call it generator like this gen okay so it's going to be responsible for creating a generators okay so you can add it on your menu if you want but it's optional so let's add it to our menu so our menu will come here and then come to our menu and then we add core i mean generators or oh, say maybe core the generators okay and then put maybe some icon uh -huh, and then you can go ahead and put now the endpoint called gens so you put the endpoint around that is on your route so we call it gens and if you come here you'll find you have added it here now so if i refresh here i should be able to do what to get uh code gens so if i click here i should be able to get the list of what of uh, code generators i mean sorry a list of code generators that i've created so I'm going to begin by creating here new so here new i'm going to begin by asking for the table okay to select it so let's go let's go there so i'll come to a project the project is here and then we come to our controller which is code gen so i'll copy it and then press control p and then paste there and then like press enter to call it take me there i can put your code gen rater like this okay so we come here and then we go ahead and put remove this created that sorry let's go now let's go down to the tables so i can put here uh text uh -huh. then I can put here also text i can put here sorry yeah you're going to fix it so yeah so if i come here so we have this one so here i'm going to put the table that i'm going to reference from our database here so since writing tables can be uh, you can, we'll need you again to a first success database so i'm going to write a logic that is going to get for me the table names from uh, from database and then after i set them as drop down here so let me come here and then i go i do like utils okay so let's go ahead and uh, come to our utils where's our utils our utils function so put it here utils okay this i'm going to come here and create another method um say public static okay function i'm going to say get table names okay so that's going to be our what our function so in laravel this is how you get the what uh the table names you just simply say tables and then you say db dot select show tables okay and then you say names and then by doing like this to be able to get for you uh the names okay so what i can do i can put here for me Instead of adding them there, I can make them what? Associative array by pasting it here. 
so the name should be the placeholder i mean should be the value and at the same time should be what is displaying so if i want to get now these uh, names okay so i just simply come here to our code generator back and then i can say for example i can say table names equals and then i put our utils get table names okay so if i do dd here you'll be able to see an array of what of table names that i know what in a database let's try and see so if i refresh here you can see what they saying find property inventory huh? there's some error let's see what it is mm. tables huh? undefined property class tables in inventory okay what are they saying Okay, so let's try to let's try to import this database DB. Okay, make sure that you import it correctly. Let's try and say again. Let's reach again. Okay, it's not working what's happening. 1897 or 79. Let me first see what we have come back with before I start looking into things. So you see, here's the table name. Can you see that? So yeah, I think uh, to get the real table name, uh, to get the real table name, you'll have to add the word, I mean the name of your database, okay? The name of your database in front of it. So it's going to be tables and then tables like this. Tables in tables. Uh -huh. How can you get the table name? Mm. Uh, tables in, this is the name of our project. Tables tables in then the name of the database okay yeah so the name of the database or you can just simply get this first value this first key by doing like Okay. okay. So, what the table name? So, if we dump and try, you see the table name is here. This is what we need exactly. So, how can we get it by just simply adding this word? And by adding this word so you can see it is um, So if you want to get a table name, so you have to put here like this. Okay. So you see that uh, you'll be able to get a table name. So how do you get this? So can I get the DB name? Let me see. If a pilot can help me there. So I can say DB name equals inventory 
and then you say that a db name say so if then you open bracket and then say put db name uh so maybe you can say key equals uh tables in dot so i open this one and then i concatenate the db name so if i want not to, to get the table i can just simply put here my key as a variable so put a dollar sign and then put the key so if i come and refresh i should be able to do that to get the table name so that's how i'm going to get the what the table name so i'll come and get uh i'll come and uh, so i'll just simply come and add it here in this array like this okay so like that like that i think we shall be able to do it to get the table name i hope let's refresh no wait 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 no it's not it's not like that it's uh let's see how we got it here so it is table then key like this okay so table then key like this so i'll come and remove and remove this and then put the what and then i come and put the same here so what is in also what should be the value like this so if i come and refresh uh everything should be fine they are they saying conversion of jb straight to string uh which one is that let's try to die from here and see what is with the problem i uh, refresh here so they're saying we are still converting uh to string an object to string let's see what it is returning here uh if we do like this so they're giving us the table name so if you do like a variable dump and come and refresh conversion of object to string okay so let me see how i got that table names here some other project because i don't want to waste time So this is how I got the table names by just simply putting there the db oh the key I think has to keep on changing you see how I got the table names like this okay So it is tables then i say come here and put i get the name then i put here the table name and then the environment db.environment and then this dot i pass here put this one here and then i also put the table name here like this i think it should work you see there you go so Let's first dump here and see. Everything is okay. It's not working. So tables. Sorry, this is data. We are supposed to add it in tables, not data. Like this. We're supposed to add it in table table names. I think that should be fine. See? There you go. So you see a table and it's table name here and a table name here table name here so like we have all the tables from the database okay so i can remove this and then i return it so you can see that i think this one can as well be on top here i don't know why it is refusing let's try that and see refresh everything is okay so that is okay though this one is i thought that this one is the same database but okay let me let me remove this okay so that is how you get the tables okay so i'll go back to our generator and then get the table names and then after i'm going to change this one to be a what a select okay and then after 
we come here and put table names and then put options as the table names so it's going to be a uh, drop down now so someone will be able to say i want to generate uh, my models or my things from a particular table bar from this drop down and these tables are coming from what are coming from the uh, from the database that we are using at this moment so let me make this field required okay rules required oh we forgot one thing the model name <laughs> we forgot the model name anyway so let us use this other field that had left pending to be the model name okay name of the model name of the class okay so I can put here uh, class name so this is required so I can make it also required okay so after doing that uh, we can go ahead and uh, endpoint so it's also required where it will be fetching the data I'll come here and remove this uh, and make it a compulsory so there you go that's a simple table so life refresh there we go now first things first now what do we want to do at this moment we want to create a what a, a financial uh, model this model finance i mean sorry a financial year model okay so uh, uh employees should be able to i mean new system users should be able to create their what their financial years so it means that you're going to come at code generator and then click on new and then click on uh, what the, which model you want to put there so i put here the that class name that programming language class name that i'm going to call financial year Okay, and then it's going to be fetching from this database, I mean from this table called financial. So its name as a class can create for him one. I mean the endpoint. So you know almost all our endpoints are fetching from API stroke the name of the model, if you still remember. Okay, so I'll put that one there. Then I go ahead and create. So you can see a record has been created, but this record does not make any sense right now. Okay, so let me first clean by removing what is not necessary. Okay, so I'll come to agreed. I can remove the created that. This is that. I can remove the ID. Can order by descending, so the latest table should be on top. Okay, so name, whatever, I think these others can do it, can follow. Okay, so when I save, so these others, I don't think they have any story, only that this is a, a model name, okay? Uh, okay, so. Uh, or you can call it class name so if i come and refresh now put on the first if i come and refresh we're able to see our simple thing like this so now we are going to write the logic that we're going to use this one to generate now the what the code of that programming language that is the logic that we shall do in our next video where I want to show you now where I'm going to just put a button and say generate uh, generate so generate maybe model so when you click on generate model it creates for you the whole code of flutter you just copy it and paste it in your project and then concentrate until uh, it finish so at uh, this moment I'll start from here so in the next lecture we're going to start from there and we see this powerful technique that we shall need in our real world programming in order to improve our what our productivity so let us meet in the 26th lecture and that's tomorrow where we're going to take it now to another level and be able to master these skills all right goodbye remember to subscribe to our youtube channel as we are going to keep more content flowing in goodbye